Hi all, we're going to look at another instructive game today. Here, the main strategic theme I want to demonstrate is the idea of keeping a solid position in order to grab squares or taking all the opportunities to grab squares when they become available. So it's almost as if, you know, by keeping a solid as, as long as possible, the opportunities stretch and, and are made available sometimes by the opponent for winning key squares. So white in this game was Peter Large who I believe was an IM at the time, and black was Michael Adams. The year was 1989, and it was in one of the classic Lloyds Bank Masters tournaments. So Lloyds Bank used to sponsor this major international tournament in London. And um, so 1989 was also the year, by the way, that I won the Lloyds Bank Junior tournament. So I was quite pleased to win the Lloyds Bank Under-18 Junior and I had um, my prize uh, given to me by John Nunn in the prize ceremony. I was really very happy that year for my chess. Anyway, so Adams Black, he played the French defence, and Peter Large played this mainline winnower variation. So Bishop B4 was um, the winnower. And after E takes D5, though, we have a slight deviation, actually. So E5 would have been standard winnower stuff, but E takes D5 is slightly unusual. So black recaptured on, on, on d5, and now bishop d3 was played. And now here, Adams played knight c6. So he's blocking his c-pawn for the moment, but he's keeping a solid position at the opening. And large prompted the um, trade of bishop for knight. So, so white has some st structural damage here, but has the two bishops as compensation. Knight f6 was played. Now knight e2 was played. So already large might have this idea of using the f-pawn as a sort of um, way of attacking later. After castles, castles. Adams now played knight e7. So this is a kind of solid strategy. If the knights end up on f6 and g6, they're looking pretty solid actually now. And it's kind of also provoking white to sort of use this f-pawn for the attack because he has got the two bishops. If the end game approaches, these weaknesses might be quite bad to have. So f4 was played, and Adams plays rook e8 now. So I think black's position is quite solid here. And it is a game, by the way, I was wondering, you know, by thinking, you know, how will Adams, you know, get out of this? Because I thought he was really on the defensive here. So he plays, after f5, he plays knight f8. But uh, black has a, you know, a solid position, and this pawn isn't so brilliant. It is, it is hemming in this light squared bishop here, and it's also a permanent liability for this c8 bishop. So um, bishop g5 was played, and now Adam plays um, queen d6, so he unpins that knight. And here, perhaps to unblockade this f pawn, you know, large played quite a controversial move. Bishop takes f6. And one thing about this is these dark squares, <clears throat> as we'll see later, especially this square, can be used by black later. When black later plays h6, knight h7 um, uh, to knight g5. But we, we're going to see that. So queen takes f6, queen d2, and now black plays bishop d7. So black's still quite solid and doesn't seem to mind white playing knight h5. Let's have a look here. Knight h5 at the moment to try and attack the queen. Just queen h4, so it's no big deal. So anyway, white played rook f3, and it still seems quite an aggressive position for white. You know, so how will Adams, um, you know, get get some winning chances out of this? He plays now h6, and for the central theme of the game, this is interesting. So the previously solid position, and you know, has been transformed to one where black's trying to grab this key dark square now on g5. So this knight might come out now to g5 later. And this is, you know, if this strategy can win games, it's another great riskless strategy along the lines of yesterday's strategy, you know, rook on the seventh. Because all, all you're doing here is keeping solid, uh, a very solid position, and just taking the opportunities to grab squares when they arise. So knight h5 was played now, and Adams offered the trade of queens. White wants to quit, keep the queens on board, so he actually played knight f4 now. But this is slightly controversial, because now the rook's sort of not protecting that pawn anymore. And, um, but uh, White's threatening this d5 pawn at the moment, with knight takes d5. Oops. So Black um, defended the pawn with c6, 
and now rook g3 was played. And again, it looks quite dangerous for black, doesn't it? So Adam's actually just played queen h4. Note, however, you know, his access to these squares is interesting. You know, the queen having access to the h4 square is interesting in itself. And also it can co con coordinate with the rook in some variations. So queen f2, king h8 <coughs> was played. And after queen f3, knight h7 was played. So we start to see Adams crawling on these dark squares now. So rook g4, and now queen um, f6 would have been interesting, but Adams played rook e1 and, and traded off rooks. And now white's position starts crumbling all of a sudden. Because if queen f1, let's have a quick look at queen f1. Queen takes c3, and black's a lot better. There's still no concrete attack here. Black's still quite um, solid. So like knight h5, rook g8, for example. So in the game, actually, uh, bishop f1 was played. And we see a radical transformation now. After bishop takes f5, black's clearly better. So he's grabbed that f5 pawn. And now, after rook g3, he grabs the c2 pawn, because he wants to gain control of either d3, and also access to the d1 square is useful. So queen g4 threatening mate. Lot, um, Adams protects that g7 pawn. Now queen d7, and now we see knight g5, so that g5 square is being finally used to bring the knight very powerful, um, powerfully to the centre with knight e4. Queen takes b7, knight e4, and after rook f3, bishop d1 was played. And all of a sudden, you know, white's completely being crushed here. There's, there's no real defence here. If knight d3, queen takes c3, and the d4 pawn's dropping off. And um, if rook d3, then queen f2 is mating, king h1, queen takes f1 mating. So um, in the game, after bishop d1, um, that was it actually. White um, just had enough and resigned. So let's have a quick overview and summary of this game. So black uh, just played very solidly and waited for square opportunities to pounce on these square gaining opportunities which white uh, gave him, especially on these dark squares. So um, the dark square strategy was possible, you know, with h6 being useful not just to offer the trade of queens, but also this later maneuver of knight h7 to g5. So I, I thought it was quite amazing how Adams turned the tables on, it, on his opponents, just by this solid defensive stuff, but also just gaining access patiently to square after square after square until finally, after Bishop D1, you know, Peter Large resigned. I hope you enjoyed that game and uh, please leave any comments on YouTube.